Math deduction is a proof. It's different than the two column proofs that you did in, uh, in geometry. And it's a way to prove this type of thing right here. Such that the sum of the first uh, uh, n integers is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Let's remember uh, what that is. If you were to plug in 1 for k, you would get 1. And if you were to plug in 2 for k, you get 2. And then 3 for k, you get 3. And then 4 for k, you get 4. What does this say is the last thing to plug in? n. When you plug in n for k, you get n. That's supposed to sum to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Would you say, well, yeah, if we did 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot, 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 kind of like we saw Frederick Gauss do, uh, you know, what that means is that we take uh, the first term, which is 1, right? So you see the 1 right there. And we're going to add it to 100, which is n right there. And then how many sets do we have that we pair together? 50. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. So it seemed like it would work. We're going to prove that that's true. And you're like, well, does it just work? You see, proof is, that's the thing about math. That's what makes it unique from all the other subjects. I didn't say better, right? Okay, Ms. Kiesler, I didn't say better, even though I know it's better. But the fact is, is that like the other subject matters, they are based off of opinion and hypothesis, whereas mathematics is based off of conjecture and proof, meaning it does not change. It is foundational in logic and will not be different. So we want to prove that rule to be true, not just for 100, but say we're going to add up a million or a billion or a Google. Does the rule still hold true? And the three principles of mathematical deduction start with this one right here. Show true. Show the rule. Holds true. For the first few cases. Ah. <laughs> Some people don't like that. They're like, few cases? Come on, Mr. Gales. Like, be specific. Like, how many cases do we have to show? You technically need to show one, but I would say show enough so that you are convinced. Now you're ready to smile your face at it because you'll know what I'm saying just a little bit. Like, we want to be convinced. Yeah, this formula definitely works. Like, I, there's no doubt about it. Now, I'm not going to write that out again. I'm just going to move to one, and we're going to show you what that looks like, okay? Let's just start with the basic thing. Suppose we're not going to add up 100 terms. Suppose we're going to add up one term. Just one term. Suppose we add up one term. That would just be the number? So say case. One. Yeah, case n equals one. Just the number one. Now we go over to our formula. How many numbers did we add up? One, so we plug in one for n. Are those two expressions equivalent? They are. I'm not convinced yet. Like maybe one just happened to work out. Let's try case n equals two. So now I'm going to add up two numbers. What do the first two numbers add up to? It's not your question. Adds up to three. So I have one plus two is going to have to come out to be three. Let's see if the formula works. We added up two numbers, so I plug in two for n. Two times two plus one divided by two, and I do get three check mark. Yeah, I'm a little bit more convinced. This seems like a pretty cool formula. I like it. We're, we're going to try another one. I'm going to try case n is equal to three. n is equal to three. All right, let's see here. So we got one plus two plus three. What's that add up to? Six. Let's see if our formula works. So we plug in three for n. And we get 3 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Um, 3 plus 1 is 4, times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. Yeah, hey, it worked! Brecken, do you think it's going to work for 4? Yes. Ty? Yeah. Autumn? Axel? Brian? Yeah, I think it's going to work for 4. Are there anybody, anybody disagreeing with that? You're, you're kind of convinced right now, aren't you? But you see how it, it, it kind of helps the more examples you see? 
try to draw it to a point where you're convinced. Usually people say, you know, do three. You know, you know that's kind of a good number. Second step of math induction is as follows. I just asked Brecken if he thought it was going to work. He, he, said, he said, yeah. So instead of showing again, we're going to assume. Assume. The rule holds true for case n equals k. And think of k as like the next few in order here, like four, five, six, seven. Okay, don't think of k as like any just big number. Think of it as like the next few cases. Does that make sense? Or we're going to assume it works for the next few. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't like that idea that we assume, but I'll show you what it means, okay? And, and here's what it means. It means that instead of adding up n number of terms, we're only going to do k terms. So instead of writing that, what we write is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot, dot, dot. And I'm not adding up k terms. I'm adding up, I'm sorry, I'm not adding up n terms. I'm adding up so I just have k, and then if I only did k terms, then instead of n, I place k in that spot. So I get k times k plus 1 divided by 2. Now, it is true that um, this right here is always the same as that. It's just all you do is you plug in k instead of n. This is what we call the inductive hypothesis. And the inductive hypothesis is sometimes glanced over. Some people don't even write it in their work, but we say, of course, place it in your work. In fact, some people would write IH after it to say, hey, that was the inductive hypothesis that we just put forward. But I'm going to say this. Second hour didn't really listen to me at all on this. Third hour did a little bit. We'll see if you guys actually listen to this. You use this. Every single time, we will make use of this. Everybody got that? This is not something we just write down for fun. You will make use of it. Got it? Okay, that was, that's all we do there. Then we move on to third step. Show the rule holds true. for case n equals k plus 1. Okay. Now here's here's the here's what you get for the wealth of experience in teaching. Okay, you work 25 years to try to get to this point. Anybody ever uh, kind of had one of those pictures that shows up on a board where, like, you look at it one way, you see, like, an, an old man with a beard, but you look at it another way, you see, like, a rabbit, or, you know what I mean, where you get to see two different things? And, and when you look at it, you say, what do you see? Somebody's like, I see an old man. You're like, what? How do you see? What? I don't see the old man. And then you, like, look at it a certain way, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I see it now. You see what I'm saying? You ever that ever happened to you? Is what I'm talking about? That, that, for some people, is what's going to happen right now, okay? So I, I will tell it to you. Not everybody will actually see it. Everybody will nod their heads, but we'll see if you can see it, okay? You ready? Okay, so there's a few parts. Of this. First of all, K plus 1, okay? So we had K, we have K plus 1. If this is K, what is K plus 1? K plus 1 is the next term. Next term. Everybody agree? So K is current. K plus 1 is the next one. Everybody got that? So we want to show it's true for the next one. That's the idea. Now, we'll see how this works for you then, okay? So keep that idea. The next one, the next one is what we want to go to. What does the next one look like? Well, I, I don't want you to write this down. I just, I just want you to think through this, okay? The next one. So we have um, works for case number right there, and then we have next one okay all right and we have next one okay so we currently showed it works for what case okay we assumed it works for k we showed that it works for one two 
and three. Everybody agree? We showed one, two, and three. We Nobody can dispute it works for one, two, and three. Everybody agree? Okay, great. So one, two, and three. So those are like our Ks, okay? We want to show it works for the next one, or K plus one. So if we show it works for the next one, then that means it would work for four. Everybody agree? Yeah. So it, if, if, we, if we say it works for three and we show it works for the next one, then it will work for four. So if we show it works for the next one, it works for four. Then we get to take four. We say, well, we showed it works for that, so now that goes here. And now the next one is, yeah, we showed it works for the next one, so it works for five as well. Well, then five gets to join in here. And if it works for five, it works for six. And then six gets to join in here. If it works for six, it works for seven. It gets to join in here. It, it, people actually talk about like a domino tip. Like you tip the first couple dominoes. And once you do, the, the one behind it makes the other one move forward. Do you see that? So the cool thing is once you show it works for these, as long as you show it works for a next one, then you go from three to infinity like that. They just all tip and knock over. Isn't that, I mean, can't you appreciate the genius of the logic there? That's Frederick Gauche. I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, math induction is a pretty pretty impressive process. So let's see how that actually kind of kind of works through here, okay? Show it works for case n equals k plus one. So here's what I write down. I got the one, the two, the three, and the four, and then the k. But I'm not going to stop at k this time. I'm not adding up k terms. I'm adding up k plus 1. So i got to add another 1 there. i got to add k plus 1, okay? And that's going to be equal to, hey, here I was adding up k terms, but now I'm adding up k plus 1 terms. So if you look at our original uh, sequence uh, uh, sum right here, we're going to say that we, we replace n with k plus 1 now. So we're going to put a k plus 1 in that place, and we get k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. There we go. Okay. So that's all we have to do to make the proof go. we got to say that the, the left side is equal to the right side. That's it. That's it. I just underlined something in green. Where else is it on the board? Right below it. And we know what this green thing is equal to, don't we? What's it equal to? So I could just dump that right there. And there we go. K times K plus 1 divided by 2. That's that green line. What else remains on the left-hand side? K yeah, k plus 1. And that is supposedly equal to k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. Now, we have to show that, I mean, everybody agree that that what I just wrote in blue, it looks a lot more like what's on the right right hand side than what I wrote in black, right? Like it's a lot closer. So all we want to do is we, we never want to touch the right hand side, never touch the right hand side, only touch the left hand side, okay? We're going to find common denominators. So I have to multiply top and bottom by two. So I get k squared plus k over 2 plus 2k plus 2 over 2 is equal to that thing. Okay, let's uh, combine some terms together. Uh, we got k squared plus 3k plus 2 
over 2. Now, here's the thing, folks. You can't do anything to the right-hand side, but you get to look over at it. Like, this is written in factored form, isn't it? So we know that this thing is going to have to factor with a k plus 1. So well, let's just write k plus 1. Well, it's k plus 1 times what? k squared plus 3k plus 2 factors to k plus 1 times what? k plus 2. Yeah, k plus 2. And that should seem obvious because you see that k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 2. We're not going to actually perform that over this side. But now all we got to do is just separate 2 into 1 plus 1. And so we get k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. And if I'm not wrong, that's the exact same thing that we have on the right-hand side. And you've just proven it. And now you get to end your proof. You, you can enter with saying done. You can, uh, you know, draw a box. You can write QED, which is the Latin acronym for that which was to be shown has now been demonstrated. Uh, you can put a smiley face, whatever you want to do. You get to end your proof. But end it, so that we're done. In logical terms, why does the process of mathematical induction work? It works because you tip the dominoes. The, the, the one that you show it works for, being you show the next one, it just makes them all tip after that. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. I talk to the person next to you, five being like, I could do this on my own now, like I get it entirely. One being like, I have no idea even where to start. Three being like, I think I get it. I just need a few more examples. How are you feeling right now? Talk, share, for you. Go. Three, uh, yeah. Yeah.